Hey guys, it's Matt LaRose here. A lot of you guys have been aware of the auto key card case, and some of you have been aware that I'm involved in the case. I'm one of the lawyers representing defendant Matthew Hoover. Well, recently we made a filing, and it's kind of made a bit of news. <laughs> There's been a few videos and articles, and I thought you guys might want to hear from the actual lawyers responsible for it. So I have brought on here my good friend and co-counsel, Zachary Zermay. Zach, thank you for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me on, Matt. Right, and so of course this is Zach Zermay. He's with Zermay Law, um, a Florida law firm. And Zach and I have worked together since we took the bar, actually together on the same day um, in Tampa. And uh, we met yeah. there. Yeah, we kind of hit it off and, and we've been working together for a long time on a lot of different cases, haven't we? Yeah, I think it was a uh, carne chopped when we got some, uh, got some drinks there. It was a fun time. Yeah, they had uh, probably the best espresso martinis I've had in that part of the state. <laughs> but so, of course, we got involved in this case. Um, of course, firearms law is something that is very important to me and is pretty much the bread and butter of, of my practice. And I just knew that Zach was the right person to uh, go at this with. And so Zach's actually lead counsel on this case. And, of course, I'm able to help as much as I possibly can um, in my off hours <laughs> this particular motion, I remember being up till like 4 a.m. <laughs> with the, the two of us working on it together. But we have a client in a very horrible situation, don't we? Oh, yes. Um, Matt's uh, currently facing several years in uh, federal prison for um, doing nothing more than talking about a drawing, which is wildly unfair. Um, and as the motion pretty clearly indicates, is actually unconstitutional under the new uh, Bruin standard, which I think we laid out in the motion pretty well, right, Matt? I think so, too. And and not only that, but, you know, we had filed motions before. I think this is unconstitutional in a lot of ways, right? Uh, because uh, let's just remember here, this isn't just uh, us questioning the National Firearms Act. There's a, there's a whole lot here. This is a First Amendment violation. Not only is the uh, auto key card itself properly categorized as art, uh, Talking about it is also expression, right? Doing uh, all of this type of speech surrounding this stuff is protected in multiple ways by, by the Constitution. And on top of that, the Constitution protects us from arbitrary rulemaking, right, that, that threatens severe criminal enforcement without the passage of any law. There's no notice, right? It is, it is the duty of the government, and this is something that's been the case for ever really the government has the duty to inform you what is and is not illegal and if the average person cannot know what is and is not covered well that's unconstitutionally vague as well so there's a lot of constitutional challenges here uh that we're that we've brought up wouldn't you say yeah a lot of moving parts of this one um and the original motion before the Bruin decision came out we did uh try to or we did move the court uh, to find the statute unconstitutionally vague, facially, and as applied to um, the Matt, which I think is a pretty compelling argument. Um, and it should be interesting to see how the government tries to address that. Um, right. But, yeah. I, I do of think course. there are some things that we need to clear up first, because, again, like there's been a few people talking about this, a few of which have my cell phone number, so I was a bit frustrated when they you know, uh, made videos reading from our motion without even calling me. Uh, but that aside, uh, Zach, what, I know there were a few things you wanted to clarify about, you know, who's involved in this case. We've actually, um, it's only Zerme Law currently that's uh, representing Matt. Uh, we have no organizational back, uh, or institutional support at the moment, apart from the uh, wonderful donations that um, we got from GoFundMe, which we, of course, thank you guys for. Um, but to the extent that anybody thinks that there's organizational backing from like the NRA or Gun Owners of America, well, we're just solo right now. We're, um, we're on our own uh, in this fight, fighting for uh, first and foremost for Matt's freedom, but also to potentially get rid of the Natural Firearms Act 1934. Right. And of course, that's another thing that we have to make painfully clear here. You know, uh, like one of the videos said, NFA to be repealed. It's like, that's not what's going on here. Repeal is a legislative process. We are 
look, there there was a command for lawyers that was in place for a long time, and that was we were required to zealously advocate for our clients. And a few years back, they took out the word zealous, which I, I always thought was incredibly odd. I mean, don't you, don't you think that was odd, Zach? Yeah, it's probably because they thought there were too many Z's in the legal system. That the exact <laughs> Z's are may zealous, something like that. But right. yeah, no, it's. Uh, I, I think that the zealousness um, is a good thing. And yeah. if we happen to um, protect our clients and get them out from under this cold jeopardy, and by happenstance uh, knock out the National Firearms Act, and that's just a um, you know bonus uh, prize right. for uh, the zealous advocacy. Right. Well, so the point I'm making there is that we we still think that zealousness is a duty that we owe to our clients because, uh, I mean, just think about this. When you are up against this massive, cumbersome, and expensive machine, you need somebody who's going to fight their absolute hardest. And that's what we're doing here. And that's what we'd be doing no matter what. Uh, you know, Matt Hoover's a, he's been a friend of ours for a while. There's, there's no way that we weren't going to put in our best fight that we aren't going to fight like hell for him. So that's, that's our number one priority here is I need, and, and Zach needs, we need our friend, Matt free. We need him free of this horrible sort of Damocles say, uh, like hanging over his head because let's, let's be real here. He didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I, 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 I really feel that way and I'm going to advocate that way. I'm going to advocate for his interest zealously uh, to the bitter end. And that's, that's what's driving us here. Uh, we're, of course, part of that zealous fight is attacking the constitutionality of the statutes that he was charged under, I mean, right? Yes, that, that's 100% the case. Um, again, the main goal in this, um, or that Matt and I have at the moment with respect to this case, is to um, make sure that Matt is no longer uh, under criminal jeopardy at the moment. And part of that, the National Firearms Act itself is in the way. Um, and we find the statute problematic constitutionally. And so we're, we're going ahead and proceed going down in this direction. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about the act because a lot of people are confused. Um, you know, some people have, <laughs> we've gotten a lot of emails in the past couple of weeks, some of which helpful, others not so helpful. Uh, I actually had one guy saying, like, actually brought up, what's this going to do to the value of my machine gun collection? <laughs> it's like, it was so hard for me not to just say, go fuck yourself, <laughs> right? Like, the, we're talking about the government threatening to lock people in cages, uh, right, for exercising the thing that you enjoy to do because you're privileged. You have the money to purchase machine guns uh, or to you know, go through the licensing product to, to make new ones, which of course would only be available for sale to non-ordinary people, as is, of course, inconsistent with the Constitution, I think. But we have to remember that... So I, I don't think people should be thinking about that. I, I think we should be thinking about what's right and, and what's lawful, right? Yeah, the uh, whole idea that screw you, I have my machine gun, and just because I have my machine gun that's protected by this uh, tax stamp regime is utterly absurd. And go ahead and tell that to you know, Matt, his wife, and his two daughters that, hey, you don't have a dad anymore because I wanted my machine gun to maintain its value. Right. And uh, yeah, that's just um, not only uh, bonkers, it's bad faith and um, absurd. Right. And you and I have both, uh, like, I'm not going to say that I haven't, you know, you and I have both, both invested in historical firearms. But guess what? It doesn't matter. What matters is what's right. What matters is upholding our Constitution. So I just want to say that uh, anyone who thinks along those lines, uh, it is my sincere hope and wish that you get very sick. But uh, aside from that, it seems to me people are just really unclear about what's going on here. So they just misunderstand what the NFA is. And so I think it's important for us to talk about this. I went through like such hell to get these original pieces of congressional testimony where they were talking about passing the National Firearms Act. 
And think back to 1934, right? This is 1934. The Sullivan Law that the Supreme Court just overturned is from 1911. All right. In 1934, we didn't have all of these news agencies watching so closely over these congressional hearings. We didn't have this type of, of, of watchfulness over our government. In this Congress, when the NFA was originally passed, the prevailing animating spirit behind everything they were doing was to get around the Constitution, was to avoid it. And that's why we have such quotes as, Mr. Attorney General, how did we escape that provision of the Constitution? Which is, of course, he's talking about the Second Amendment. Uh, and then they bring it, just like, just like in the Obamacare uh, question, they're like, no, 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 we're not banning machine guns. It's a tax. And the Attorney General admits if you were to say no one can own a machine gun anymore, well, that would be constitutionally problematic. However, if you tax the machine gun, in the words of the attorney general, that's a whole different story, right? Because all they have to do is pay the tax. Of course, fast forward a few years later, where, again, the Supreme Court has not seen many Second Amendment cases, largely because there were not too many firearms laws. Um, and of course, Miller being a whole separate thing that there's a fascinating history of Miller. It was calculated by the government specifically to uphold the NFA. And it only did so in a very narrow context. And of course, the Miller test has not been revisited, really. Now we have a clear standard in Bruin. Now we have a clear standard for how these laws are going to be reviewed. And of course, we're of the position that our client never touched a machine gun in, in what he was doing here. However, they are still trying to use this law, which was passed as a tax, right? Tax, mind you, they collected no revenues for in the first year it was passed. That's suspicious. And then in 1986, they said, okay, well, you can't pay the tax anymore, right? That's constitutionally suspect. Because the whole theory of this is, no, 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 we didn't ban it, we taxed it. And you go to prison if you don't pay the tax, and you're not allowed to pay the tax, Right? I mean, Zach, does that sound constitutionally sound to you? No, it doesn't. And I'd encourage any government official that wants to escape the uh, provisions of the Constitution to get on a boat and go to Cuba because, uh, you know, that's a place where you can escape the provisions of the Constitution. And um, I'll even charter the boat. I'll we'll drive to Key West and we'll put them on a, on a <laughs> ship them off to, uh, to uh, communist Cuba. Yeah, that sounds great. like a decent place for them, actually. Uh, but all that aside, again, this... The statute is wildly problematic. Um, people misunderstand uh, the, the standards that are in play here, the standards that have been in play. And the simple fact is the government has never carried its burden before with this law. And the point I was trying to get at, and, and you know, maybe you'd like to speak on a little bit, Zach. We don't agree that the law should be implicated at all here because there were no machine guns. These were, and this is a, a, when we were writing the brief, Zach came up with this word, tchotchke, which I absolutely adore. And we stuck with the word tchotchke throughout the motion. Uh, Zach, why don't you tell the people what a tchotchke is? So it's a trinket, whatchamacallit. Let me pick up at a bodega, perhaps, when you're uh, traveling in New York City. Um, it's just really anything. But what it isn't, it's not a machine gun. Uh, that's the one thing that's clear. And something that um, you know we probably need to harp on a little bit more is that we never, in any respect, admit or even suggest that the auto key card, this tchotchke, this trinket, this um, you know, who's it? Yeah, is a uh, is a machine gun. It, it's not a machine gun. What we are saying though is even if the court were to conclude, or the trier of fact were to conclude that it is a machine gun, well. The National Firearms Act of 34 is unconstitutional, um, right. facially and as applied. Right. And so that's where you get into the, the different things we're asking for here. One, we attack the statute on its face. I think it's a good attack. Two, we attack it as applied. Now, this is the thing you do in litigation. I mean, Zach and I have been involved in criminal cases and we've been involved in complex civil litigation. What you do is you plead in the alternative, Right you ask for several different things. So we're asking the whole thing's unconstitutional. And if you, 
you know, if you disagree, then in this specific instance, your application of this law to this person is unconstitutional. And then on top of that, we've asked that the government demonstrate a deep history as required by Bruin, a deep history of laws where the government can, through a unelected administrative bureaucracy, decide which items are and are not regulated. There's, there's a lot going on here. When you understand how absolutely broken this uh, system of, of laws is, the National Firearms Act is, you see how complicated it is to, uh, to address. And, and that's why we've done it this way. Again, we're fighting our absolute butts off here and we're going to take every avenue that we possibly can. And, and that's the, the nature of the motion, right, Zach, in, in going in those alternative ways. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, it's, uh, I think it's fair to characterize, uh, you know, mostly our practice is a lot of civil complex litigation. Um, and we're filing these, um, you know, highly technical complex motions. Um, and yes, we're, this, we aren't acting like this is a normal criminal case because it's not a normal one of the mill um, criminal case. One involves our client. Right. Um, so it immediately is the most important case ever. And second, um, there's all these uh, constitutional issues, nuanced um, facts that make this um, just a uh, category part. This isn't like, you know, a um, meth gang with a bunch of heavy weaponry uh, crossing state lines. It's a uh, dude in Wisconsin making YouTube videos about a, uh, a tchotchke. Right. And again, like I stress that it's a tchotchke, it's a trinket, it's a who's it, it's a what's it, right? It's... It, it, and this is really important to me. We're talking about a etched piece of steel. The government publishes patents with all of the instructions that you could need to make whatever you want. And also, like there's, there's so much that the government hasn't even alleged. A lot of people completely misunderstand this case. This is a really horrifying overreach. And I... it breaks my heart so much what they're doing to Mr. Hoover. And that's why we're here. And, and you know, we assured him we're here to, to fight like hell for you for the very end. And we're going to do absolutely anything it takes. And uh, if that includes overturning a unconstitutional, evil, vile federal law, sounds cool. Oh my God. If that's what it takes... To get the uh, the decision um, and adjudication in this case that we need to get for Matt, then you know we're we're willing, able, prepared to do everything. Uh, of course, the balance of professionalism to zealously advocate for our client. Right, for sure. We just want to be able to make sure that we have all of the tools we need if we have to go wherever we have to go. Uh, we already made him a promise. We're not going to stop until, unless and until he tells us to stop. Uh, if that means the 11th Circuit, you know, if that means whatever. Uh, I don't, hey, Zach, are you going to stop? No, I'm not going to stop. I mean, we even moved the transfer of the venue of the case to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready to uh, go to Green Bay and uh, start litigating there if that's um, what it takes to effectively get um, you know, Matt. Uh, acquitted of these uh, bogus charges. Get him his life back, really. This is a man who never deserved this. I mean, you know, think about what... Nobody's perfect. Think about anybody, whatever you want. Just remember, it's today, the tomorrow, me. So, just think about that. This is a... He's a good guy. He's a, he's a good salt-of-the-earth dude. I've, I've had good... I've spent time with him. Zach and I both spent time with him. We had dinner with his family. He's got adorable kids, you know, very animated family, but these are good people. And I just, yeah. I can't believe that they're trying to do this to him. It's, it's he's, the, um, he's the quintessential American uh, living the American dream before the uh, United States Attorney's Office just decided to try to obliterate them. And uh, that's what they're currently trying to do. And, um, you know, uh, my firms are in May law. Um, and Matt 
and I are the only thing currently stopping um, him from being locked in a cage for several years while his uh, leaving his family without a father. Right. It's just unacceptable. So anyway, I hope that cleared things up for you guys. Um, that's, that's pretty much all I had to say. Zach, is there anything else? Nope. Just, um, you know, mash that like and subscribe button. Um, <laughs> yep. Right on. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. Zach, thanks for coming on the show. And thank you all so much for your support. I mean, I know that Hoover really needs it and really appreciates it from all of you guys. So thank you again. Y'all are the... Y'all are really the wind in our sails, helping to keep us going. Of course, y'all and our wonderful client, Matt, who's a great guy that doesn't deserve to be punished like this. He hasn't done anything wrong. That's one thing I want to make it clear. This is an injustice. Yes. All right. Y'all take care. Thanks.